Welcome to Breaking Free with Elder Mel G. I thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be talking about chemical dependency, which is psychoactive drugs. I thank you for tuning in. I would like to introduce my guest. Uh, I have Brother Joe Davenport Jr. from Christ Emmanuel Christian Church, Fellowship Church. And he's on my far left. And next to me, I have Brother Lamar Teller uh, from Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. And both of these churches are in Walnut Hills. And, I, and they will be telling you about their experience here in Cincinnati and in their neighborhoods about what they have seen and the things that they go through. So I thank you again for tuning in. And we will be coming from scripture from the Holy Bible. So we use the Holy Bible to talk to you about what Christ has done in my life and what Christ has done in their lives and what Christ can do in your life. So I thank you again for tuning in and I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit touch you and teach you at the same time that you hear our voice that our voice will be a word from God for you. Thank Excuse you. Me. Amen. So, the um, what the title of our show is um, will be a man that plant good seed is wise. A man that speaks and teaches about the Lord is a wise man. In other words, a man that seeks knowledge, let him ask of God. That is a wise thing to do. But instead of being like Adam and turning away from what God said and using his own understanding, leaning to his own understanding. Um, I will first say I was an addict out there in New Jersey for about 18 years. I was on the streets. I lived in abandoned houses. I had to stay with neighbors, but I never had a place of my own when I was on drugs and alcohol. That's the life that I went through. That's the life that I knew. I mean, I became so discombobulated I thought that that was the way I supposed to live. And that's nothing but the enemy that's blinding you. And the more blindness come over your mind, it's like a wolf come over your eyes and you can't see nothing but what the enemy wants you to see. Uh, I would like to ask my brother Lamar first about something he experienced. But first I would like to read this scripture. And the scriptures talks about the sower. See, some seed we can sow to, uh, um, some seed can be negative seed. Some seed can be positive seed. But whatever you receive in your heart, let it be from God. And this is what the parable of the sower explains. It says this, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one. Uh-huh. Then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is which receive seed by the wayside. So, Brother Lamar, let me ask you, by you being out there in Cincinnati on the streets, what is something that you have experienced in the neighborhoods when you try to talk to the people of the neighborhood or someone you came encounter with about the word of God, when you tried to plant that seed in their heart. Can you briefly tell us something that you have, have experienced experience with them and what type of 
or rejection or re reception you receive? Most of the times when my Lord, Father God, leads me towards him or her, he always touches my heart mm -hmm. to uplift them. And he never leads me or guide me towards the wrong direction. So it opens their heart already to receive the word what he gives me to give to them. And most of the times when he leads me, it always turned out to be a positive thing that he touches my heart to give it him or her. Okay. Okay, thank you, Brother Lamar, for your insight on that. And I know that Brother Lamar, um, um, he probably, um, he's out there, you know, he lives in Walnut Hills, and just by me, I work at the YMCA in the Walnut Hills, and I know just by driving, I see a lot of addicts and alcoholics standing on the corner, you know, drinking a uh, can of beer or something like that. So I know that he probably experienced just seeing, uh, we can't reach everybody. But those that will receive the word, it's a good thing that they received it. But sometimes, like the Bible says, it says that, I read verse 19, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received was received by the wayside. Now, I look at the wayside as those that stand out there on the corners, those that hang out there in the street by the wayside. You know, um, anything can happen by the wayside because the wayside is what uh, uh, my understanding is that wide and broad road that leads to destruction. Because they have received the word. I mean, they, 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 I mean, they, they heard it, but they, their heart didn't receive it. In other words, that's what it's saying. They didn't, it didn't take root because they had nowhere to grow because of the things that was, the things of the world that was around them that they are used to being with. There's one thing about man. Man is so afraid to come out of his comfort zone. If you're, comfortable, if you're comfortable being in sin, that's the place where you will stay. It took my mother praying for years and years and years in order for me to come out of sin. And some of you are still out there because you're in your comfort zone. You think that's the way that you're supposed to live, but it's nothing but the a trick of the devil, the trick of the enemy. He's a liar. Jesus said he was a liar from the beginning. And he's still a liar today. So we have to ask ourselves a question. Do I still want to deal with something that's pessimistic or what? But, uh, believing that nothing good is going to come out of my life or believing that nothing good is going to come out of this situation. You get some people, I mean, that gets up and get up in the morning and don't even say good morning. I was staying in the... Um, in the, uh, what was that, rehab in New Jersey, and, and most of the guys that get up, because we was all in, in, on one floor, and most of the guys that get up, they didn't say good morning, they get up with a, a frown on their face, or like they want to hurt you, or something like that, so it was always a fight in there, so I mean, we better be glad, even the addicts and alcohols, we glad that God has woke us up this morning, we need to think about that. Now, I want to ask, uh, talk to my brother, uh, Joe, and let Joe tell us something about he had experience in Cincinnati, Walnut Hills, or whatever part of Cincinnati that he has, you know, experienced, even downtown, Vine Street, uh, things of that nature, what he had experienced when he tried to uh, feed somebody the Word of God. Brother Joe? Well, from my experience, um, first of all, um, um, some years back I was homeless. Um, and I was homeless several different times in my life. And, and when, you, when you actually be, you know, become homeless, you get a chance to really see a lot of people on different levels. And um, one thing I've learned about when you're speaking to someone about God, you know, 
you have to be a, a real person. You have to be a person, a, a somewhat transparent for them to even really understand that God is real. And that's exactly where I'm at with it. It's what people, what, a lot of times you have to be able to be transparent to a certain extent with people so they can really understand how real God is. And the only way they know is if, if somebody talks to them on a certain level. So uh, by me uh, experiencing homelessness uh, some years back, it gave me a chance to really meet a lot of people. And in that homeless situation, that, you know, it's some, they, they, when you're homeless like that, the, the homeless people sort of become family on the street. And that's where I had a lot of opportunities. Even in that situation, uh, me br being brought up in church, I had a lot of ch uh, opportunities to, to talk to people, to encourage people, even when I was homeless with other people. And, and that's what I'm very thankful for, that I could be in that situation, but the Lord was with me even in that situation. So that's my thing is to, you know, people relate to you when you can be transparent about your own personal life, let them know your struggles, what you've been through and what you, even what you're presently going through, but let them know. And, and that's how people really know that the Lord is really with you and he's working in your life. And that's, and that's been my experience personally. Well, praise God. Thank you, Brother Joe, for those, yes, those encouraging words that you have gave someone. And I know that these brothers, Brother Lamar and Brother Joe, is touching somebody hard out there because today, the shoes that they used to have on, somebody else is wearing those shoes, Brother Joe and Brother That's Lamar. Y'all don't That's have true. to wear those shoes anymore. That's true. And why? Because of the grace of God. That's right. God you gave right, us time though. to get That's that us. thing right. You right. If it wasn't for right. grace and mercy right. that follow us all the days of our life, right. we'll be right. dead right now. Exactly. Yes, We'll be there right true. now. Yes, so I thank God for the mercy that yes, He sir. has. Yes, sir. There's nothing like the mercy yes, sir. of God. Yes, sir. Nothing. Yes, sir. Nothing <laughs> yes, sir. can compare. Thank you, Lord. With Hallelujah. That's yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Nothing Hallelujah. Can compare yes. with yes, grace. Lord. Hallelujah. I remember one time. Let me line this up with, yes, with, with the time that I was late paying my rent. Yes, sir. I said to man, I said, now this is man, brother. Yes, Lord. I said, y'all don't give nobody grace time. And the man said to me, Two days, yeah. we need our rent money. I said, how about grace time? I thought it was at least five days. Mm -hmm. Right. He, he said, we need our day. He ain't saying nothing, but mm -hmm. we need our money in two days, or else we're going to have to, uh, you know, there will be some repercussions. I said, okay, okay. So man don't want to give you grace. Yeah, that's true. But God will give you grace. Yes, will. So nothing yes. can line up or either compare yes. with the grace of God. Yes, yes. Sir. that's right. true. You're right. So let me get back to the sower. Yeah. I'm going yeah. on uh, yeah. Matthew. We're meeting from Matthew 13 and 20. Mm -hmm. It says, and, and I'm going to verse 20. It says, but he who received the seed mm -hmm. into stony places, mm -hmm. the same is he who hears the word. And annulled means immediately with joy yes. receive it. Yet, verse 21, has he not root in himself? but endures for a while. For when tribulations or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. By and by, he is offended. Now, when I first got saved, the things that was new to me uh, the things that I used to do, right. mm -hmm. they was coming at me. Mm -hmm. It was the enemy trying to remind me of who I was, trying to say, you still are. That's true. Was is a past tense. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. I had to fight that enemy and let him know that you are a liar. Yeah. Even if you fall short, as the Bible said, of the glory of God, pick yourself up Amen. and walk again. Mm -hmm. Because when you first get saved, you mm -hmm. are just like that little baby you used to take care of. You just like that little baby your mama used to take care of. Mm -hmm. You are that little baby. When mm -hmm. you fall down, mama said, get back up. When you fall down, daddy said, get back up mm -hmm. and walk again. At the age of, well, let's say 
eight months, maybe the baby is trying to walk and he keeps falling down. But your father, your earthly father, your earthly mother says, get back up. So when you first get saved, nobody said that this walk will be easy. No one said that. Everything you was is going to try to come back at you. That's true. But you got the word of God mm -hmm. to protect you if you Thank use you, Lord. it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If yes, you Lord. use it. That's right. Let's put this thing in general. Mm -hmm. Let's think about the enemy, mm -hmm. a man, since that's what we used to be. Mm -hmm. And I hope that nobody's doing that today. We used to, I mean, I used to carry a sword and shotgun. <laughs> I did. Mm. I had under my mattress yeah. in North New Jersey. So, <laughs> so look, when the enemy came at me, I pulled out my sword and shotgun. Mm. And you, did you think they run? Right. No, no, they didn't run. They flew That's like it. Superman. Because <laughs> they expect we pull nothing that big out of my trench coat and my long suit. Mm. So yes, I did. I'm from mm. old school. So today. That sort of shotgun is my Bible. Amen. It is the yes, word of yes, God. Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So mm -hmm. when the enemy comes at me, mm -hmm. I pull out my sword and shotgun, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes, it is. So look, nothing is sharper than the word of God. But if you pull it out and use it, what would it look like if I were to pull my gun out and just lay it down and say, I ain't going to use it? I would have gotten beat up. It's the same way, and I'm trying to put this in, 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 in a way that the neighborhood can understand what I'm saying because I'm not trying to get too holy right now. I'm trying to speak your language. Go down your avenue, go down your street because some of y'all are still carrying those guns. And so instead of using a gun, we are not fighting a physical fight. This is a spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. So yes. therefore, if we yes, pull out the word that's mm -hmm. hidden in our heart yes, and yes. tell man, give him the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell the enemy, I should say, give him the word mm -hmm. and let him know that he's a liar mm -hmm. and he's the father of it. And whatever you say, devil, I have a word for you. Yeah. Today, and as long as I'm on this earth and God got breath in this body, I will give you a word. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. Brother Lamar, yes, yes uh, there's so many things that's going on. Mm -hmm. What what do you say about the people, your opinion about mm -hmm. how can we reach those that's still sleeping under the bridge, those that's mm -hmm. still down there at the drop-in center and, count, and, and using drop-in center as a resting place, uh, uh, perpetually, forever. Looking at it like they, like this is my, this is where I supposed to be. How? I mean, what can we say to those brothers that feel that down is up, and up is down? Mm -hmm. My heart and my spirit mm -hmm. says, yeah. the Lord, Father God, He's doing His work, and He giving us the power and authority to start seeking and knowing the best in each other. And and just and just know it, and and, and it's 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 gonna do his work. That that the energy that he put in us to give to others, without us even having to say say anything to anybody, but just knowing it, and and don't put each other down, and in our head and in our conscience, and, and see the worst in each other, but see the best in each other. Fight the enemy, even when your conscience, you know, want to say the best. About I even when your see. conscience want to see mm -hmm. the the worst upon someone, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying, you gotta rebuke it and see mm -hmm. the best yes. on him or her. That's true. Regardless of the matter, mm -hmm. that's what my heart and spirit says. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother Lamar. Yes. Uh, same question to my brother Joe. Uh, how will you deal with those and get them out of that mindset? that the streets is where we supposed to be, uh, or the drop-in center uh, is where we supposed to be, and have that type of mindset, because they're so used to being down, they're afraid to come up. Uh, you know, from my personal experience of living in the drop-in center and the gospel mission, 
with my personal experience of living in that gospel mission and the drop-in center and, you know, what I found out is, personally experiencing that, okay. is that we have to, those that really have a heart that love the Lord, we have to come out of our comfort zones. We that know the Lord, that, that we have to come out of our comfort zones and go down and start talking to these brothers and these sisters and just letting them know that we have been there in their shoes, letting them know that if the Lord brought me out, personally out of that, I know he could bring somebody else out. So to me, the greatest testimony is, you know, when God bring you out of something, you go back, you know, and you go back to where you, where you were at. And the reason you want to go back to let them know, hey, I was you. This happened to me. And I know if God brought me out and blessed me to move forward, you know what I'm saying? He could do the same thing for you. So my whole thing is, you, you know, I believe you got to go give back. You got you to gotta give something back. And see, a lot of those brothers that are, that are out there in the streets, you know, that done lost, that they, they've lost everything. And I know, you know, what that's about, you know. But the thing about it, we got to go back and we got to go to the streets. We got those, and, and, and let them know that they are loved and they are cared for and there is hope and that they can move forward. Because I was them, and I remember that day, and I was very thankful because I had a great pastor back then, to make a long story short, that saw something in me. And because of that pastor, and he, know who, he knows who he is, he saw something in me. He believed in me. And because of the time that he spent for me, that turned my life around. And, and ever since then, I've been moving in a, a different direction in my life. But it was because that pastor saw something in me. And I was at the drop-in center, and I remember that. I was about 40, I think 40-something, and, and he saw something. And he got personally involved with me because he saw something in me. So we gotta, we, if we go and reach back, reach back, and that'd be that one, and that'd be the one that God calls, that person come forward. And I, and I really believe that we, we should give back because it's been given, so we have to give back. And that was my, that's, that's how I see that pretty much. Praise God. Praise God. <coughs> I like that. Um, I think my brother Lamar experienced something like that. Lamar, can you tell us about that? Through my journey. Uh, well, did we share something with me about the yes. apartment and you went and... Oh, yes. Um, if you, I mean, if it's okay. Yes. When, from my trust and faith in my Lord, Father God, it was a time that I had gave up everything that I had, and, and I met my spiritual dad, Herschel Willis, and I slept by the river for seven days and seven nights mm -hmm. to, to put myself in other brothers and sisters' shoes the way that they feel. And I had me a, a nice one-bedroom apartment, I had beautiful furniture, and I, I gave up everything I had, and I slept by the river for seven days and seven nights, and I met my, my spiritual dad, Hershey Willis, and, and I haven't looked back since I can remember, and, and I've just been holding on from my trust and faith in him, and I've been letting him guide me, my Lord, Father God, and, and, and it's been, uh, I, I can't even express it, it's been a glorious journey since, since I just opened my heart up and let my Lord, Father God lead and guide me and, and show me things and show me visions of dreams. And, and showing me like things that that the people that that mm -hmm. you wouldn't even imagine. But it, 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 it's God give us the power and the authority to make our own decisions. That's what, when I meditate and think upon things like that. It's amazing that He give us the power and the authority to make our own decision. It's up to us. But when you're ready, it shows you He got His hand out for you. You just gotta not look back and look forward because that true. door is open and that light is shining right through that door what he has yes. in store for you my sister or brother just know and believe it and your journey keep continuing with him yes, by man. your side yes, Praise God. thank you brother lamar yes. mm -hmm. um you know the experience the experience that these brothers have had that we have had out mm -hmm. there on the streets, mm -hmm. I mean the wilderness. Uh, Jesus had a wilderness experience, and the wilderness 
it represents the world. I mean, when Jesus, when he was out there in the wilderness, for example, the Bible tells us in Matthews that uh, Jesus, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And it said afterward, the enemy came to him. Right when he finished fasting, the enemy came to Jesus and was tempt, trying to tempt Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus was tempted. But Jesus was never to use his powers for his own glory. Let's say that. And we, and we say his own glory because remember, Jesus was in the flesh. The part of Jesus was the spirit living in flesh. So he crucified flesh while being in the flesh. So no, he didn't sin when the enemy tried to tempt him to turn this stone into bread. He took him on the high pinnacle. I mean, he took him up high and showed him the glory, all the glories in the moment. And you can have this. Isn't that just like the devil telling you what you can have? The devil is telling you what you can have when it's already yours. It's like Jesus. He tried to tell Jesus all these kingdoms you can have. It was given to me. I can give it to whoever I want to. <laughs> That's what he said to Jesus. But you know what? Jesus used the word. He told me, get ye behind me, Satan. Satan left for a while. So the same thing with you, my brothers and sisters. The enemy is showing you things that's already yours. Some people, the enemy says, go steal that car. That's your, that's your car already. You don't have to steal something that belongs to you. All you got to do it is do it the way that God say do it. Go to school. Do it the right way, make your money, and go buy the car. Some of you can make enough, I mean, can graduate from college and, and have a good job, a, a doctor, lawyer, teacher, maybe even a preacher. And with the money you make, you can buy yourself a car and maybe help somebody that's was struggling like you. If you do it the godly way, if you follow the law of the land, and do it the right way. Why should you try to take something that somebody worked so hard to get? We want to break. I used to break in houses. I mean, I'm not just pointing the finger at you because I was like that, breaking in people's houses, uh, 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 stealing from my own family, just to get those drugs and the alcohol. So the seed that was planted in me was to kill and steal and destroy me. That's the seed that was planted in me, which is John 10.10. 10. It says that the enemy only comes. The only reason why the enemy comes, there's no other reason, but he only knocks on your door to kill, steal, or destroy. One of those he's going to do. But he's, he, it's going to start with one, but it's going to wind up being all of them. So destruction, that's his mission. So he planted that seed of destruction in me. That's why Matthew tells us they stay off that wide and broad road that leads to destruction. And on that wide and broad road, you're going to go down a lot of avenues. You're going to see a lot of things happen. You're going to see the whores, the pimps, the prostitute, and all of that. And what we call pimps today is undercover. Because I don't know what they call them today, but back in my day, we called them pimps. I don't know if they still call them that today, uh, Brother Joe, Brother Lamar. Uh, but whatever yeah. they call them, that's what they are. This so, you know, it's, it, it's, it's uh, uh, Brother Joe, there's so many people out here that uh, uh, we killing, we want to kill each other in the neighborhood, we fighting. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews, uh, what's the Hebrews 12 and 14, it says to follow peace with all men. Mm -hmm. And and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, I know that it's rough sometimes, but the Bible says that we can do this. If God said we can do this, we can do this. 
And that's why the Bible tells man, it says to pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. pray without stopping, I mean, without stopping, because something could be, could be waiting for you outside the door. When you get off from work, something. I mean, God keep us from danger seen and from danger unseen. Because we don't know. I mean, I hear people say this here, Lamar, Brother Lamar and uh, Brother Joe, that God gave me a second chance. God gave me a third chance. You cannot put a number on how many <laughs> times God does save your That's life. True. He don't save your life unawarely that you don't know about. Amen. Believe Amen. that, brothers That's and right. sisters. Yes. That's you right. can't put no number on how many times God saved your life. That's That's true. Just, just say he done saved my life again. Mm -hmm. You talk about the things that you see. Right. But how about the things that you don't see? Yeah. He done save your life. Mm -hmm. How about one time you was driving down the street and instead of you, you say, well, for some That's reason true. I want to go Thank left. You, Lord. Or some reason I want to go right. Mm. For some reason, mm -hmm. it's because something was waiting for you on the other side, the enemy. And God saved your life right then. That's true. But we would never, the devil trick is this. The devil wants you to believe in what you see. Exactly. He don't want you to believe in the unseen. He said, if you can see it, believe it. But God says, walk by faith mm -hmm. and oh, not Lord. by yes. sight. Yes, yes, So Lord. don't believe mm. just what you yes. see. Yes. Believe in the unseen because the unseen is directing the things that you see. Yeah, that's hallelujah. true, though. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Cool. Praise that's God. True. That's, that's true. That's true. So, mm. uh, thank you, Lord. Brother uh, 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 Joe, um, so many people is worshiping mm -hmm. uh, everything. You know, can you name some of the things that man worships besides God? Well, <laughs> okay. You know, everybody talks about money, money, you know, and that's, you know, it's really funny. You know, I mean, money is a blessing. It is a blessing. It's nothing against money. Thank God for money. We can use it as a resource. God has blessed us to have that. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they talk about the stuff they have and all this. And it's all good. There's nothing wrong with it. I think that because like even in the word, it says, God says, if you work, if you work, you earn your money, you should enjoy your home and your, your, your money and all that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a blessing to have somebody, to be a blessing to someone else. But I think that's one of the things that a lot of times people value people more. A lot of times people say, well, they value people more who have these, the money and the material things. But God is first. Amen. God is first. The yes. earth, all this out here belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to the Lord. The earth, the trees, all this, Glory, everything out here belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things will be added unto you. So, you know, that's the thing that, 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 um, that we, we, you find people, uh, some people work, make a long story short, two or three jobs. But they don't understand, chase God, not money. Mm -hmm. God will take care of you. Okay. And I want to ask my brother, and thank you, Brother Joe, for yes, that. Uh, word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, also to you, Lamar, can you tell us some of the things that you say that man is loving today and worshiping today and not God? They focus on lusting, mm. you know, and thinking like that. that's the thinking that's the right way to go without putting their trust and faith in our Lord, Father God, and praying for their wife, you know, or their queen, as we call them, you know, and, and letting the Lord, Father God, lead you to your wife, mm -hmm. getting on both of your knees and taking that time and energy from your trust and faith in the Lord, Father God, and, and waiting on your queen. It's nothing like your own, you know what I'm saying? That right seed the Lord, Father God, have for you to plant the seed in and waiting on her because it's a lot behind that when you put your trust and faith in the Lord Father God like I've been doing for five years my trust and faith in my Lord Father God I've been waiting on my queen my wife who he said was mine when she sat by mm -hmm. me yes and it's just up to you if you decide to wait you know me I don't like giving my love to anything and everything just that. 
going around just doing that mm -hmm. and just and it's basically hurting yourself mm -hmm. mentally and even hurting that person that you was doing that to him mentally mm -hmm. and you think you doing something right and it ain't right. Mm -hmm. well, it's just, it's all up on, he give us that grind authority like he put on my heart to always say to, to do what we want to do, but we all know right from wrong. It's up to you when you're ready to go towards the right way. Like I tell my brothers and my sisters all the time, like when you go right, you can't go wrong. That's the real you for real. It's easy to be hardcore, thanks, gangster, thug, play, as people call them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yes. But it, you know what I'm saying? But it's hard to do right. Right is you for real. Mm -hmm. That's the humble you. you. You can't find nothing better when you find that righteous person in you. You it takes you to a whole nother level what the Lord Father God had in the store for you. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Lamar. Mm -hmm. Really yes. appreciate that. Yes, and I really mm -hmm. I just wanna Thank Brother Lamar and thank Brother mm -hmm. Joe for Appreciate showing it. up and coming on the show yes. and to express uh, their emotions and things that they mm -hmm. have experienced out there in Cincinnati. And I'm sure all around the world, what we are talking about, uh, people is not planting the seed on fertile ground. You know, they plant it on rocky ground, uh, mm -hmm. they planted, planted by the wayside, they planted it on mm -hmm. around thorns, they planted it around uh, 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 stony grounds, you know. So uh, this seed had to be planted in fertile ground. And what we mean mm -hmm. by seed, we are talking about the mm -hmm. word of Excuse. God. That's what we're talking about. <coughs> and so, Bless. so many people is worshiping Mm -hmm. Everything but God. Ah, uh, they worshiping things that don't have any life. Ah, uh, they worshiping they worshiping the celestial. Some people worship stars, the moon, you know, uh, 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 things of that nature. But nobody wants to worship God. We rather worship things. I mean the the the, the uh, things that have been created instead of the Creator. We rather worship that. I mean, you think about uh, some. Think about let's see the uh, the Big Bang theory. Let's think about that. Uh, we got people that believe in the Big Bang theory, but let's say that it is a Big Bang theory, but it's the theory. Is just an idea. So if it's an idea, that don't mean that it's true. But in this sense, the Big Bang is true. What do I mean by that, my spiritual brothers and sisters? Ask those that just believe in the Big Bang theory what was before the Big Bang. Who put the Big Bang there? Something had to put something there. So let's say it was hypothetically a Big Bang. Mm -hmm. That Big Bang was God that put everything into existence to, for those that believe in the Big Bang Theory. Um, mm -hmm. We want to have a, it's one thing that I see that we want to have. We want to have a king. Uh, who was that? Uh, my man uh, back there when David was being king. Uh, the people before David, David was the king that was supposed to be mm -hmm. king, but the people wanted Saul to be king, and they asked God for a king. Why did they ask God for a king when God was their king? Well, they wanted to be like the other people. They wanted mm -hmm. to be like the other nations that was around them. They wanted a king too. They wanted a king that was tangible. They wanted a king that they can visualize. They want the king that they can see. They want the king that they can touch. Now, isn't that the same thing that happened back then is happening today? That's true. Why? Because people want to have a king. Let me prove that to you right now. Mm. For example, some people look at uh, Mike, my, when Michael Jackson was living, he was the king of pop. Did they worship him? 
Yes, they did. Some people worship Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley. He was the king of rock and roll. Did they worship him? Yes, they did. People worship my, uh, Elvis Presley, Aretha Franklin. She is, the, she is known as the queen of soul. So we know every king have, has a queen. That means in the natural part, in here on earth. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the only queen that God have is us. Because he married the church. Yes. So we are the queen. Yes. We are the bride. That's right. That's right. We are the one that's married yes. to God. Yes. So uh, 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 it's to say Aretha, Aretha Franklin is the queen of soul. The only queen of, queen, uh, of soul, I mean, not queen, but king of soul I know about is Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the king of our soul. Yes. Yes. Now you look at James Brown. We call him the the godfather of soul. Wait a minute. See, we give people these names. Uh, when these names is is uh, 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 fabricated, uh, uh, it's not true. So what you made a good record? So what you can dance? So what you can sing? But why don't you praise the one that gave them that gift? Amen. Even though they're using that gift not to serve God, not to give God the glory. They're using the gift to give the devil the glory. Amen. Because if I'm saying it about something that's contrary to the spirit of God Amen. and it's not representing God, I'm giving the devil the glory. Yes, you true. say that I'm not a devil worshiper. Mm -hmm. If you're not a devil worshiper, stop getting on the stage doing all that nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. Stop speaking derogatory, vain things. Stop dancing in the club with the spirit of Cain. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. worshiping the devil. Mm -hmm. So don't say you're not a devil worshiper. We all was devil worshippers. We ain't got to put no mask on. You, you, you was born with the mask on your face. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ came to pull that mask off oh, your face. Yes. You yes. might still yes. wear the same mm -hmm. face and the features look the same, mm -hmm. but the heart has changed. Yes. The yes. heart has changed. Yes. So if I do go back in that mm -hmm. neighborhood, I'm not going to go worship the king. Mm -hmm. Those kings that we have today are the kings from yesterday. But still, my name, the ones that used to be my neighbors would say, he the one that robbed me. You know why? Because man looks on the outward part. Yes. But God looks on the inside. Yes. So believe me, brothers, I have to pray before I go back into the neighborhoods that I robbed, still and almost killed in. Because man is still looking at me the same way. Man is still looking at my brother Lamar the same way. Man is looking at my brother Joe the same way. But God sees his heart. Amen. God will keep us protected Amen. from all harm and danger. Yes. But if something do happen, like somebody out there probably thinking, if something do happen, it was his time to go. That's right. It's our time to go. Yes. Every man has a time to die. Exactly. Appointed. Time, the Bible says there's an appointed time to die. That's true. Okay, we're not here to stay forever. No. This is a temporary life right here. Exactly. So why would I want to try to have my heaven and my heaven here on earth? Like some people trying to go to Mars. I mean, they trying to build, I mean, in the future, they talk about building stuff on Mars and we move to Mars. Mm. So what? I mean, go ahead. If you want to be crazy enough to move to Mars, you still you will die on Mars. Then you'll be buried up there, even they ship you back down. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, wherever you die at, it's not going to make you uh, 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 um, right. supernatural. It's not going to change nothing. You, your spirit still going to leave your body. You got to get out of here. And you will put on a new form, mm -hmm. a new body. So I thank God for those words. Yeah. And something Praise I want to say, <coughs> uh, some, I mean, all these things we go through, we have to be philosophical about some of these things. Mm -hmm. So what, my, my, my girlfriend left me. Yes, yeah, so what? I mean, be philosophical about it. I mean, I mean just, just uh, 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 say, well, I'm still alive. I, I still got a chance to meet somebody else. I mean, 
the right one that God has has for me. Uh, uh, don't go and uh, react in a negative way. You know, uh, 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 try to feel uh, optimistic about life. You know, that something good is going to come out of this. If they left, it's a reason they left. No matter if it was on your part or their part, it was time for them to go. Because God is trying to make room yes. for you. So he can put you on the right track. Exactly. You know? So we cannot always think that because, and yes, no pain, no gain. And that is true. The world made a record out of it back in the day. No pain, no gain. I'm not going to sing it for you, though. Mm -hmm. But, uh, because... You know, Amen. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a singer. <laughs> so I'm going to let Joe uh, end the program with singing. So Sister Nicole, mm -hmm. y'all let me know when it get close Amen. time. You know, I'm going to let my brother Joe end it with singing. So, yeah. Uh, Amen. Oh, uh, yeah. So I would like to say something to you. In the book of Genesis, real mm -hmm. quick, then I'm going to give it back to my brothers for a minute. We're going to go to the book of Genesis and see what, and see how all this stuff started. The enemy have talked to, talk to um, Adam and Eve at uh, the third chapter of Genesis and we'll be, I'll be, we'll be talking about the fall. Now I'm going to cut through the chase and go straight down to where the enemy, where God says, he says this uh, verse 3, 3 and 3 but of the fruit, now this is God telling but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat of it Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now that's Eve talking. Eve is telling the serpent that. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. In 5, verse 5, he says, For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What did God, I mean, what did Satan, uh, Satan, Lord, be the name of Jesus, what did Satan mean by telling Adam and Eve that they will know good and evil? What did he mean by that? Jesus says that he's a father of lies. When he said good, did he really mean the word good? Adam and Eve already knew good. So what good is Satan talking about? Well, I see two negatives there. Now, <laughs> let me give you a translation of this scripture. When Satan tells you something, it's always a lie. He will take the truth <laughs> and twist it, but it's a lie. He said, and you shall be as God's knowing, knowledge, knowing good and evil. Remember, they already knew good. So what good is Satan talking about? Translation is this. Satan was telling Adam and Eve, he said, Adam, my man, like we do out in the street, Adam, whatever you call good, my brother, it'll be good. You'll be your own gods, you and Eve. Y'all gonna be your own gods, whatever you say is good is good. You ain't got to listen to God. Your good is better than his good. So today, I say, man, those are some bad shoes. The Bible says don't call what's good bad and bad is good. Man, two men can get married. Oh, that's good. Yes, two men can get married. They get married. The ones that believe that, uh, that it's all right for the gay nation, uh, two men to get together and two women get together, that's good. Where did that good come from? People call that good. Go all the way back to the tree where the devil says, whatever you call good, Adam, is good. Because you say you will be like God's knowing good and evil. Well, you know the devil ain't going to tell you about God goodness because we got a finite mind. And God is infinite. Our mind cannot comprehend the things of God unless through the Holy Spirit. So therefore, the devil doesn't have the mind of God. So when he says good, he's telling Adam, whatever you call good is good. And you know why that's true? Because what man say today is good, is good. Mm. And that's a lie. So uh, read that scripture. The Holy Ghost gave me that uh, a couple of months ago. And I, um, I can see it with the spiritual eye. 
Because everything that devil said to Adam and Eve, we all are, we all came from Adam. We did not come from God like some people say. If we came from God, why did Jesus have to come back and reconcile us back to God? Uh-huh. It says reconcile man back. You know, I went somewhere, but I'm gonna bring you back. Let me get that now. Reconcile man back to God. We are not from God. If we was God intended every man before the fall, number two, be born out of Adam. Before the fall. But when Adam sinned, you didn't come to existence. No man came to existence until after Adam sinned. So that's why the Bible says she was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Because everything, every man that came out of Adam was a sinner. So Jesus, God said, he promised the devil in Genesis, the second chapter, I mean, the first, no, the second chapter, somewhere that, and I had time to go there, that he was going to send his son, the seed of a woman. Who he was talking about? Jesus Christ. He promised to send him because he was going to, he was going to bring Christ back, I mean, Christ here, the word of God that would became flesh, Christ, and bring man back to himself. So, uh, where are we at, Sister Nicole? Okay, got you. So, before we close, I just want to get out here. Uh, my brother, Lamar, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Brother Joe for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for welcoming me. You're too. welcome. Thank you. I mean, thank you. And I want to uh, uh, ask you, can you leave, briefly leave our audience with uh, a word of encouragement? The brother Lamar first. Yes. <clears throat> I'm asking my sisters and brothers out there today to just start to see the best up in yourself. Because up in yourself, the reflection, the spirit that's in me that the Lord Father God blesses me with mm -hmm. is of me. See, see me, what I see in you. And I want the best for you just as well as I want the best for myself. So seek the best and know the best and walk that path with the Lord Father God have for you in store and not be afraid to keep straight and see the best in things and I just I love you my brothers and sisters and I pray and I know the best will come for you okay thank you brother my, my, my brother Joe uh, I just want to encourage people out here is focus on living and don't stop worrying about dying <laughs> that's my that that's that's what I want to encourage everybody because you know you hear so many people talking about who done died, and God bless the people that, because that, that, we all got to go there. But we need to focus on living. Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Okay, thank you, Brother Joe. Uh, Brother Joe, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm uh, Amen. in the show now, but um, I want you to sing us off air yes, and give, uh, give the people something, you know, just sing us off air. And uh, audience, I would like to thank you for tuning in <laughs> with Breaking Free with Elder Mel G. I pray that you get something out of this program, and I pray that we touch your heart and that you'll walk in the newness of Christ. And with that, we say good night and take care, and Brother Joe will end the show with a song. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. Gotta cry sometime, I gotta cry sometime. So much trouble, trouble in my way. Gotta cry sometime, I gotta cry sometime. I laid awake at night, I laid awake at night. But that's all right, that's all right. Cause I know Jesus, Jesus, Glory. Jesus it. After a while, after a while, trouble in my way. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. So much trouble, trouble in my way. I gotta cry sometime, I gotta cry sometime. I laid awake at night, I laid awake at night. But that's all right, that's all right. Cause I know Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. Cause I know sweet Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. Food on your table, Jesus, he will fix it. The Lord is able, Jesus, he will fix it. Shoes on your feet, Jesus, he will fix it. Clothes on your back, Jesus, he will fix it. Cause after a while, after a while, cause after a while, after a while.